Welcome to GC365. Today is August 28th, and we are on day 240 of the One Year Bible Reading Plan. My name is Mandy, and I'm here today with our online pastor. This is Crystal. Thanks for joining me today, Crystal. You bet. I cannot believe we are in August, you guys. It is almost Labor Day. It's almost time to go back to school. I know. I feel like summer just started. Wow. Here we are. Here we are. So as our online pastor, Crystal has been on every single day on our GC365s on our Facebook lives, chatting with all the people there, with the viewers. How does it feel to be on day 240? It's great. You guys, I so enjoy being there with you all. It's such a great community. And if you're not watching, well, then I guess you're not hearing me. But if you're not watching, start <laughs> watching. So you still, maybe, <laughs> you still have time. Invite your friends. That's what I would say. Invite your friends to watch with us. Um, but I love it. I love that people ask questions. Uh, Karen, Karen, I always see you out there asking questions. Alice has great comments every day. It's just fun. Yeah. So what would you say is the biggest takeaway? Like, what do you feel is the most rewarding part of the GC365s? It's the community for me, mm -hmm. but it's also, I love it when the people who are on give us a little challenge or a little, here's how you apply mm -hmm. this today. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So when we were kind of talking through our GC 365s or for today's reading, we decided that we were going to go through and kind of list out some of the observations from the reading, mm -hmm. some questions that we have, and then some application. How can we apply the reading to our lives? And when Crystal and I were talking about this, she said that as a staff, because as a staff, we read the one year Bible mm -hmm. together each year. I think this is our ninth year. Yeah. Which is crazy. I've been here. This yeah. is my third time going through it. And my been a little bit better than the past two years. <laughs> little, uh, yeah. Every year Confession there. Yeah, it gets better. Um, but she said that in the past, the staff would do this. This is mm -hmm. kind of what they would do at their devotion time is to look at the observations, the questions, mm -hmm. and the application, which I think is important. And it's just a really different way to look at uh, the one year Bible reading plan. Yeah. Have you struggled through reading the one year Bible? You know, I've had a little bit of a struggle for the last couple months, but mm -hmm. basically it's because I get up in the morning, I get a cup of coffee, I go back to bed, I read my one year Bible, I do my gratitude journal. Well, I got this dog now <laughs> and she doesn't allow it. So yeah. I'm struggling finding when to do it because mm -hmm. I like to do it before I see you all on the GC365. Yeah, definitely finding time and, you know, in your routine and what makes sense. Definitely. So when you're reading, do you typically think about these three points as you go through it? I usually try to think application first. Mm -hmm. So when I remembered, oh, hey, we used to do observation, you know, questions, application. I was like, yeah, I really need to start thinking about that again. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you read through and you're like, I don't even know what that meant. Yeah. I think that's the hardest part for mm -hmm. me is I really take on this idea of needing to understand everything, like every piece of it. And what part am I missing or mm -hmm. how, like, where is this connection coming from? Or I don't, I don't totally get where, you know, these things are happening when I think it's, that's, I mean, overall it would be great to have that understanding, mm -hmm. but just kind of breaking it down into smaller pieces. I think it's easier to digest that way and to really kind of understand it and to take something away from it, which is truly, I'd say the most important part of reading the Bible. Right. And do you find, so this is your third year. Mm -hmm. Do you find that each year as you read the passages, you think about them differently and how to apply them to your life? Differently? Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in the last three years, even just life changes, you know, right. of different seasons that I'm in. And so different things hit me differently depending on what's going on in my life and what's happening at home, what's happening kind of at work, right. things hit you differently. And there are some stories that I actually get really excited to read again that are kind of fun or a little dramatic, mm -hmm. you know, the drama. I was like mm -hmm. the drama of, of the different stories. So, Which yeah. brings us to Job. It's pretty it dramatic. It's Job. pretty dramatic. Job is. So yeah, our reading um, today is Job in the Old Testament. Then we kind of hit uh, Second Corinthians in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Then we always have our Psalms and our Proverbs. So let's look at some of our observations then uh, today from, and then we'll hit questions and applications, but from Job. So we're in chapter 28. So what were some of your observations here? Okay. So he's talking to his friends. Mm -hmm. um, he lists a lot of things. This really surprised me. Mm -hmm. I've never noticed before, but he lists a lot of things people know how to do. Yeah. Like we know how to mine. We know mm -hmm. how to do this. We know how to do that. They knew that the earth was molten at its core. I mean, we're talking thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. And it surprised me that they know that. And he also kind of had a, a piece about hydroelectric dams, basically. <laughs> like, he was like, okay. we can take water and make energy. And I was like, yeah. wow, really? I know. I didn't know they figured out how to do that back then. Yeah. Apparently they did. Yeah. 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 So yeah, he definitely lists things. I know when I was going through, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, 
we, yeah, we know how to do that. Cool. Good. Great. But he starts to, it's all around wisdom Mm -hmm. and understanding wisdom, this section. And he makes these different references of, again, of all these things he can do, but he then goes to wisdom can't be bought with gold and wisdom is more valuable than treasure and starts to kind of go into how we can do all these things. But wisdom is not something that we can just make happen. And it says, right, that's another observation. Mm -hmm. It is hidden from the eyes Mm -hmm. of humanity. And so we often think, oh, that person is wise or this or that, but it made me question. Mm-hmm. No, it absolutely does. It, it, yeah. Yeah. And when it says in there that God alone understands the way to wisdom and he knows where it can be found. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so I think a lot of times we all spend so much time again, like learning skills, learning how to do things. And yes, it might make us smarter in certain ways, but just because mm-hmm. we're smart, does that necessarily mean we're wise? Right. I guess I'm kind of leaning wisdom into a question. Wisdom is <laughs> yeah. different, but it is. Yeah. And I did, I loved verse 28 where mm-hmm. it says the fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. Mm -hmm. So that kind of hit me as well as an observation. Yeah. What about 29? 29. So as you know, Job is talking about his former blessings um, and he talks about people and the layman's losing them. So just, he was just his grief. I mean, Mm -hmm. he seemed just really alone, (laughs) really sad. I was kind of, I was very sad for him um, reading through this chapter. And he talked about in the lament how Mm -hmm. he used to comfort people Mm -hmm. in their grief and in their mourning. And it stuck out to me. My observation was who's comforting Job? Yeah. They're not, they're accusing him. him. Mm -hmm. And just not his wife, not mm -hmm. his friends. When he lost his kids, he lost, I mean, he lost pretty much everything. So um, yeah, I mean, you need that comfort yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah. Did you have any more for 29? No, like no. Cause it kind of, that leads into 30, yep. how he's mocked. He mm-hmm. lives in terror. He's depressed. He's physically in pain. Mm-hmm. Just so many observations. What else did you see? Yeah. Well, I liked um, verse 15. Um, it says, I live in terror now. My honor has blown away in the wind and my prosperity has vanished like a cloud. And I said, I said to Crystal, it's like it, to me, that is such a reminder that as quickly as we can, gain riches and have successes, it can be taken away as as quick as the wind, just Mm -hmm. anything can happen. And and with Job, um, you know, we had said so many times, like he didn't really do anything to deserve to lose everything that he had. And it was so quickly taken away from him all at once. And so it's, uh, to me, that was such a good reminder that as quickly as it can come, it can be taken away just as fast. Well, and everything is a gift. Mm -hmm. Everything is a gift. And so it kind of leads us into the application. Mm -hmm. The book of Job used to bother me so bad because I was like, okay, here's Job. He is doing everything he is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. He's worshiping God. He's providing for his family. He's being a good example Mm -hmm. in the community. He's giving wisdom. He's faithful. He's doing everything he's supposed to do. And Satan comes along and he's like, yeah, I want to test him. And God goes, yeah, (laughs) okay, all right, (laughs) all right, go ahead test him. He's not going to fail. But to Job, he loses everything. everything. And the test is so dramatic, it like is we were dramatic. saying, yeah. and hard. He lost his kids. He lost his riches. He lost his standing in the mm-hmm. community. He lost kind of his marriage. His wife is mm-hmm. questioning him. He lost his friends that are saying, what you, you, you have mm-hmm. sinned and they're telling him to denounce his God. And mm-hmm. like, what did you do to deserve this? You must've done something yeah. and yet he, and after he takes away, you know, his possessions and his things, Satan tests him again and God lets him test them physically. Yeah. Then he loses his health. He loses his health. And I mean, then again, it's like the one thing you can maybe hold on to is taken away. And it's, yeah, I can understand why this is an upsetting book. (laughs) Right. It used to upset me a ton. And then I, I kind of realized this time as we're, as we're working through it. So I've been through Mm -hmm. a lot in Mm -hmm. the last couple of years, I've had a lot of changes and, and, you know, I've kind of at times felt like Job, you know, uh, woe is me. Why, (laughs) why me? Whatever. Um, But I realized through that, as I'm reading this, we are thousands of years later And all of Job's suffering is to show us we're still talking about Job. We're Mm -hmm. still learning, be faithful, even in our suffering and that we will have trials and God will come through. Mm -hmm. So there's a little spoiler alert for you. 
Um, it turns out okay. I hate to ruin the book for you, um, <laughs> but Job has another gone. family. He regains all his riches. He regains his standing in the community. This is like a season for mm -hmm. him. And this is all we hear about Job is this season mm -hmm. and how he was faithful and how he handled it. So my challenge to you all would be get a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. You do this. Yeah. If you are going through something, even if you're not, it's great to remember what we need to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. But if you're sitting there going, I have nothing to be thankful for. I am Job. I have lost it all. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, I was allowed to breathe today. I woke up. Even if you have two things the first week that you write in it, you will start to realize how blessed you are mm -hmm. as you go through it. And and it will be, you know, oh my gosh, I have a job. I have a family. Mm -hmm. I have, or I don't have a family, but I have friends. Or I woke up today and I physically feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it can be some of the li littlest things, but when you start going through the things that you can be thankful for, it just really puts things in perspective because we yes. obviously all want, right? We all want more, right. we want the best, we want, you know, everything to be great and perfect. And it's easy to dwell it in is. the not so good. Exactly, you can spend a lot of time there if you're not careful. You totally so, can. Yeah, but Crystal is, like I said, she's on the Facebook lives mm -hmm. for the GC365. She's our online pastor during our services on Sunday. And so she's yeah. there for you if you I am. need you guys... to reach out to her at all. She's there to chat with you, to talk with you. Mm -hmm. You can send me a Facebook message anytime. I'm there to pray with you. If you wanna go to coffee, if you're local, mm -hmm. if you wanna hop on a Zoom, if you're not local, you can also email me, crystal at goldcreek.org. This is, I'm here for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so let's go back up to questions we had from Job. So we had our kind of our application, a gratitude journal. Yeah, we do that. The questions. Questions. That's okay. It's okay. Um, but what's kind of interesting is this, this chat book that actually gives, it puts some questions there for you. So it makes it a little bit <laughs> right, easier. It does. It but sure does. I had um, written down verses 12 and 13. They, um, he says, do people know where to find wisdom? Where can they find understanding? And then he says, no one knows where to find it for it is not found among the living. And I had mm -hmm. read that. And then I, as you keep going, I read it again. I'm like, did I just reread what I just read before? But no, he repeats it again in verses 21 and 22. And mm -hmm. to me, it's just, again, it's, it's that reminder of losing sight of these things, mm -hmm. um, of where do you find the wisdom? Where do you kind of find the understanding? It's the reminders of being present in your, you know, your current feelings and, you know, writing that right. stuff down and kind of being there for that. Well, and my thought on that, my question was, why is Job talking to his friends about wisdom? Mm -hmm. These people are like tearing him down. Given what's all happened to him and so recently, how is he not bitter? How yeah. is he, why is, why is he talking about wisdom and, and how God mm -hmm. is going to help him through help it? Him and he must have done something wrong himself. Mm -hmm. Well, to have all that done to you, you do, you've got to question that on yeah. some level. Like, okay, I must have done something, but yet he speaks of wisdom and is mm -hmm. faithful. And, and he says, I was that. faithful yeah. and I didn't. didn't, I didn't do anything mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah. So that is Job. And we I also spent have, most of our we time, spent most of our time on Job. But Hope you guys like Job. <laughs> enjoyed it a little bit more. But we also have Second Corinthians. We didn't have a whole lot from this. We really only mm. had a few observations. Well, Paul, the only thing I really observed, Paul is worried about Titus. Mm -hmm. And in his worry about Titus, he doesn't share the gospel in the town he's in. Yeah. He's like, I'm worried. I came to talk to you guys, but I'm, I'm worried about my fellow missionaries. So I'm going to go find him. Bye. Yeah. Like, Which was shocking to okay. me. Yeah. I, you, right. It is. Yeah. Um, we also, you had kind of put that, um, Christ is perceived differently by those who are being oh, yeah. saved and those who are perishing, mm -hmm. which is interesting as well. Yeah. Yeah, really. It, it, it was eye opening to me because mm -hmm. you don't think about that. I mean, you think about, oh, that person doesn't know Jesus. I need to talk to him, him, mm -hmm. her, whatever. But you don't think about it that way. Yeah. Was this, I should know this, but was this also when they talked about when people perish, the smell will be yes. pleasant for those um, who, believe. who believe and will be like an awful smell for those who don't. And I was thinking about that because I don't have a very good nose. Like I don't smell oh. well. So it's not something I like to totally admit, but mm -hmm. I don't. And so it's kind of, it was interesting to me. I'm like, oh, okay. So like, 
is that something I'd be able to smell? <laughs> I bet be that you would to? because have you ever <laughs> smelled decay? Have you ever smelled like protein uh, decaying? Mean, You're like, oh. Yeah, okay, stay away from that. If it's really close to me, I can I yeah. can smell. But I just thought that was interesting that the smell would be the thing that permeates. That, yeah, is you know, if you're smelling something nice, like you're being saved. And if not, yeah. like, whoops. <laughs> and are we supposed to be able yeah. to smell it? Like I'm sitting uh, yeah, next exactly. to you yeah. and we're in real life. Is yeah. that what you're saying? We're yes, in real life. Yes. And, would have, would you know, yeah. oh, you yeah. smell like you don't know you Jesus. Need, yeah. <laughs> you need a little Jesus. You don't smell so good. <laughs> I don't know. I hope that's not it. <laughs> um, we didn't really have a lot of questions in application. Though. I guess that was a no. question. That ended up being a question. Question. So, I didn't have a lot of application yeah. except, you know, we should be sharing our faith. Yes, absolutely. But anytime Paul opens his mouth, that's the application yes. that we get. Right? Yes, yes. Share your faith. Share your faith. And then we go into Psalm, we're in Psalm 42. So what were your observations from that? Did you notice how that was very um, similar to Job? Yes. Like David is Mm -hmm. lamenting his loss. He's lamenting all these things that he used to have. And then he's saying, but each day the Lord pours unfailing love upon me through each night. I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. So he's in a bad place, clearly, mm-hmm. as David often is yeah. in the Psalms. And he's still pouring out his heart to God. Yeah. Even in his laments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I had written down verses nine through 10 through here. He says, it kind of goes back to when we were um, talking before, kind of in Job of um, being thankful for things and how a lot of times we spend time just being upset and angry and grieving and asking Mm -hmm. the questions of why, Mm -hmm. but he says, Oh God, my rock, I cry. Why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief oppressed by my enemies? Their taunts break my bones. They scoff. Where is this God of yours? You know, that questioning, you know, um, in there and yeah, again, just kind of that reminder of, you know, Mm -hmm. when we're in those times, we need to almost flip that (laughs) reverse kind of our our mindset there. My question is, why is David always so depressed? Yeah. Why is he so depressed? I mean, he's king. I get it when Saul is chasing him and his best friend is Saul's son and all of that. But but I feel like that was a short season in his life. And this is like, he's just depressed all the time. Why? Why? Pretty good. Right. Like, like, what's your problem, yeah. David? Yeah. Be a little more grateful, would you? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Can we tell him that? Yeah. So for application, there's kind of a theme today, uh-huh. I feel like, which yep. is, you know, praise God and know that he is faithful even in your distress yep. and hope that you can use what you're going through to help someone else in the future. Mm-hmm. Make it your testimony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we go into Proverbs. We're in Proverbs 22. And you had kind of had mentioned that, um, Last month, we spent our sermon series in, in Proverbs. Proverbs and trying to become a little more wise yeah. each week and, you know, having some of these points at us. And this one just says, just as rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. Yeah. So. See, I love Proverbs. Proverbs yeah. is my favorite book because mm-hmm. there's so many quick nuggets mm-hmm. and you really don't have to explain them. Yeah. And it doesn't have to all tie together. It's like it can, it's they're standalones. Like right. you can just read the Proverbs and get yeah. so much from it. And I never read a proverb and go, oh, not really. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I agree <laughs> like with you that. you read it and you're like, oh, uh, yep. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I know. And I, I think we had kind of said it earlier, but there are ones that hit you at certain times, kind mm-hmm. of depending on what season of life you're going in. And I think that they are always applicable in some way. So yeah. those are, they're always good. Yeah. So that brings us to the end. That is the end. So we want to thank you so much for joining us today, uh, spending your time with us and going through the one year Bible reading plan. Yeah. We are only on t- t- uh, day 240. We still have at least a hundred days to go. So mm-hmm. it's not too late for you to join us in our reading plan. Uh, you can go, go to gold Creek tell your and sign up. Yeah. It's tell your friends and, um, mm-hmm. you know, comment in the chat with us, talk with us, share mm-hmm. it. Um, you can follow us. And I think we're to both going to be on today. Are you going to be on today? I will be on the chat today. I know yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be watching and we'll be there to chat yeah, with you. So you so. can chat with us. And you know what? Reach out anytime. Like mm-hmm. I said, you can message me on Facebook or crystal at goldcreek.org. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Have a good day. All right. Thanks.